Cyberpunk 2077 is both an extremely dense and incredibly immense game, featuring a ton of features that the game kind of just throws at you all at once and several it never fully introduces you to. So in this video, what I want to explain are some of the hidden or poorly explained features in Cyberpunk 2077. Certain things you may have not even known were available to you. In this video, I'm going to be covering some of the fundamental features of the game, some things you probably didn't know you could even do, but also show you a ton of freebies and little things here or there you could do to really optimize and improve your gameplay. There's a mountain of information here covering nearly all aspects of the game, so hopefully you do find it helpful. And if you do, you can leave a like or get subscribed. I have a few more Cyberpunk videos coming, including a new one on some of the mods to release for the game. So one of the first things the game just never really seems to introduce to you are these three options on the main menu, each of them having a percentage associated with them that will increase as you progress Cyberpunk 2077 overall, doing main story and side missions. So funny enough, these things are still kind of a mystery, but I can shed some light on what exactly they are. The leftmost one here is easily the most obvious, that with reputation. It seems like this is a large in part going to be progressed just by doing the main story of Cyberpunk 2077, and more or less, as you are introduced to some of the different factions, get your name out there around the world, this will get upticked. It doesn't really seem like it's tied to something like street cred, but rather tied to you actually doing some of those main and side missions and meeting the various factions. And it looks like you don't actually finish this one until certain endings of the game. Actually, depending on which ending you choose, you could kind of finish it out, getting it to 100%, but some people finish the game with it at 90%, but also isn't just a raw gauge of your story completion. Just because mine's at 75% doesn't mean I'm 75% done with the main story. This middle one is also extremely important, as this one is tied to your relationship with Johnny Silverhand, as the naming and description of it kind of suggest. An interesting point with this one though is what we found through testing is that this middle option is actually based not only on doing quests with Johnny Silverhand, so both main and side missions, but also decisions you make with him. So actually making decisions that are more favorable towards Johnny Silverhand's character. And this is critical because reportedly Cyberpunk 2077 has an additional ending option if you get this to over 70%. That being the Don't Fear the Reaper ending, there aren't complete guides as to how to get this just yet. It of course involves favoring Johnny Silverhand across main and side story missions, but go ahead and google down the rabbit hole as to many people trying to get this more hidden or obscure ending. Now as far as this rightmost option with the race against time, this is easily the most obscure and there really isn't a concrete explanation as to what exactly this is. Many people are complete with the game and still have this under 50% progressed. The description of this one basically talks about the chip in your head, the relic and its impact on you. You would think it almost be the anti-Johnny method, doing more selfish things to save yourself and not help or save Johnny Silverhand, but it really isn't clear. So if you know, please comment down below. I spent numerous days testing this one. It doesn't seem like it's just locked to completing gigs or side jobs or anything like that. It's something a bit more complex that I haven't quite uncovered yet. And seemingly I haven't found anyone in the community that has a solid answer here. One of the other big misconceptions is around what difficulty is impacting. There have been some discussions that difficulty impacts your loot received, the quality of loot you receive as well as your AI's behavior. In reality, it seems like the two core things difficulty will impact are how much health enemies have, in general enemy scaling against you, so sometimes it seems like bosses might be a slightly higher level, and then how much damage you take from enemies. So on higher difficulties, enemies will deal more damage to you. But as far as loot drops, and in particular getting higher tier weapons on either lower difficulties or higher difficulties, it doesn't really seem like that's a thing. I did a lot of testing on this, and it didn't seem like enemies on very very hard difficulty, we're dropping more or less rare or epic loot compared to on some of the lower difficulties. There may be some slight adjustments with eddies and ammo, but large in part, the experience was pretty similar. The biggest change was just in damage dealt and damage received. Enemies tend to be more bullet spongy. You tend to die way quicker. And when it comes to AI behavior, it is exactly the same. The AI is just as dumb or smart in moments as it would be on any difficulty. Although do you know, if you are changing the difficulty on the fly, which you can do, you actually have to be out of combat, so in case you hear this and want to start playing with it, it will revert you to your last save, so do take note of that one. Another big question I constantly see people talking about, which is kind of obvious once you know it is, what do the backgrounds on weapons mean? It's actually really simple. If your weapon is equipped, it'll have this blue background, and if a weapon is iconic, it'll have this orange background. Iconic weapons are unique weapons, they're one-offs in the world. If you have a weapon that's both iconic and equipped, it'll have both backgrounds at the same time. Both of these are pretty handy, so you know what you're dealing with, and 
in particular with iconic weapons, another rumor I see going around is it's okay to scrap them, you can just craft them again. That's not true at all. Once you scrap an iconic weapon, you can never get it back as far as I can tell. Once it's gone, it's gone forever. What you can do is actually upgrade iconic weapons. So the tiers of loot in Cyberpunk go from common, uncommon, rare, epic to legendary. Legendary being the best. You might get an iconic weapon that is a unique one-off weapon that's just rare. So you can actually craft it into a higher tier, such as upgrading it from rare to epic, and then eventually from epic to legendary. But as you can see on these crafting recipes, although it improves the stats, gives them certain bonuses, it actually requires the base weapon to upgrade it. So you still need to have that weapon in your inventory, and in fact, you'll only have one. So it's not duplicating these weapons, you'll just have the same one with a higher tier rating. And overall, the appeal of legendary loot is oftentimes they have certain special effects on them. So whether or not it's iconic weapon or not an iconic weapon, they'll typically have more mod slots and they'll do something special, whether it be some kind of elemental damage type or some bonus you could find in the description. An important note on legendary weapons that is pretty handy if you're trying to find a top tier one, you'll find many of the different vendors in the world tend to have a legendary weapon or two. If you actually wait 24 hours, the stock will be cycled through, but also the legendary weapon will have its effects changed. So you kind of sit there and re-roll the effects on the legendary weapon or how many mod slots it has a couple of times. And also, of course, just change what stock they actually have in their inventory to begin with if you're looking for one type of weapon. Unfortunately, this does not work on Ripper Docks, so you could only be re-rolling on weapon and armor traders, and also food if you want to do that for some reason. And also worth noting, Ripper Docks do have different inventories. Depending on where you are, Ripper Docks may have higher tier items on them. Of all places, IGN actually has this really nice list of what each Ripper Dock carries and the requirements to buy it. So generally speaking, the city center will have nicer things than something like Pacifica, which will have worse items overall, but perhaps if you're a lower level, more accessible to you, things you could actually purchase now. But speaking of trading and your inventory overall, don't take this perk. At first glance, it probably seems really nice, the scrapper perk, it automatically will disassemble all the junk in your inventory, but it's actually kind of dumb and not all that handy. There are several junk items in this game that are worth 750 eddies a pop. If you disassemble them, they won't be worth that much. The scrapper perk will automatically disassemble these and make them utterly worthless. So in general, I would just say avoid this perk. Junk doesn't actually weigh anything in this game. Nine times out of 10, it's more handy to actually sell junk than to scrap it anyway. But if for some reason you are playing as a hoarder in Cyberpunk 2077, an important reminder I feel like most people miss is your car does have a stash in it. So just go up to the trunk or the frunk or the side, depending on the vehicle. It seems like basically every car has some stash access. It just might be in a different spot depending on the vehicle and get throw a bunch of stuff in there. Now, for one reason or another, your apartment also has a stash, but these two are not connected. They're actually two totally separate stashes. Each car stash is connected. So regardless of which car you're using, it'll all be one unified network. Honestly, I would never use the apartment stash because it's just pretty unhelpful, except for one specific reason. And that is if you want some cool iconic weapons to pop up on your wall. So this mechanic is honestly kind of dumb, but you have this really nice weapon room in V's apartment. Honestly, I barely go to V's apartment in my playthrough, but if you are a completionist or just want to have a cool screenshot of this being filled out, it seems like there's a lot of misconceptions about how you get a weapon to pop up here. So right off the bat, you actually need to have the right weapon, and I think this is the biggest misconception. You might have a bunch of iconic weapons, but if you don't have the right ones, they won't pop up on the wall. But even further, basically all you have to do is put it in the stash, specifically your apartment stash, and then it will pop up on the wall. This is kind of frustrating or dumb in my opinion because you have to leave the weapon here. So one of the easy ones you can get is Plan B, which is Dex's gun. To get this one, you simply drive out of Night City into the Badlands, literally just go here in the junkyard and you can find Dex. If you do this at any point in the game, and once you have the Plan B, you could drive back to your apartment, put it in your apartment stash, and you'll have it nicely displayed on your wall. But again, you have to leave it here. So if you want to actually use the weapon, you have to take it out of the stash and it will no longer be displayed. It's one of those weird things that, although a really cool feature, I've never used because if it's a good weapon, I want it in my inventory. And as I mentioned before, there is no way to get duplicate iconic weapons. You could upgrade them, but it'll just upgrade that singular one. It's not like you're going to have two then. Although something you can get for your apartment is a cat. So if you run around the corner by V's apartment, you'll find this little note that does say feed the cat. And basically there's a bowl here. And if you have cat food in your inventory, you can place it in the bowl. A lot of people are wondering where on earth you can get cat food. One of the easiest place is actually the Arasaka in industrial complex and has a fast travel point on the map. Fast travel here and 
and then stand to the entrance, kind of right to the right side of that fast travel marker. And then from here, just run in and kind of follow the path I'm going on. Actually, one of the main story missions will take you here. And more or less, as you run in here, there'll be this little ramp area where you could run down, go through this door, and literally right there sitting will just be some cat food. From there, you can return to your apartment, place the cat food in the bowl, and then typically go to sleep or wait a day, return to the bowl, and you'll find a pet cat there. After that, you can pick up the cat and you'll have a permanent cat addition to your apartment as well as their own food bowls included. Now, functionally, it doesn't seem like this actually serves any purpose, but at the very least, it seems like it is one of the only ways you could customize V's apartment. One of the other really big things I feel like the game just doesn't introduce you to well is actually downed versus dead enemies. So in Cyberpunk 2077, you do know that when you scan an enemy, they may have a bounty. And after killing certain enemies, it'll give you a reward. Sometimes this is money, sometimes this is street cred or experience. One of the weird things with this game is when you kill an enemy or what seems like you're killing an enemy, you're actually not. So the vast majority of the time, when an enemy kind of falls over and is laying on the ground, they're technically still alive. You could hover your Corsair on them and it'll turn red because yes, they are alive. To actually collect that bounty or some of those other rewards like street cred, you have to finish them off. This typically takes just one melee attack or one bullet, whatever you want to go with, but just a good rule of thumb across an entire playthrough, it seems like there's only benefits to finishing off enemies most of the time. Like functionally, the game is treating them as if they are dead anyway, but you're not getting the rewards as if they actually are dead because technically they're kind of seething around right there. But then I know some of you are going to want some free stuff, and I have quite a few free things you can get that are actually really, really good. So right off the bat, if you want some better items in the game, you can actually sell V's outfit and buy it back to have the armor rating upgraded. So take for example here, V's pants have only three armor. Just sell it somewhere, buy it right back, and it will have a much higher armor rating, more akin to your actual level. Just a quick and easy tip you could do at any point. And of course, this item is in your inventory from the start, so you should have it. But there are also several free cybernetics you can get once you get to the open world section of the game. There are these free mantis blades that are at this cyber psycho sighting in the city center. Pretty easy. Just go to the city center, go to this location specifically, and you can do this even if you're an extremely low level. A lot of people think you have to kill the cyber psycho or actually engage with them in any way to get these, but you don't. Simply run into this room and at the side there is going to be a box with legendary mantis blades. Lose the box and run away because it is a fairly tough fight, especially on the earlier half of the game. Go to any ripper dock and you can get these things installed for free. These are legendary, they're one of the best pairs of mantis blades you can get in the game, and you could literally get them in the first 20 minutes of playing the open world section. In a very similar vein, but not quite as well known, we also do have mono wire. You're going to want to locate this alley in Watson. It's fairly straightforward. Once you locate it on the map, you'll even see the alley kind of outlined here. There's going to be a job right next to the location, but for this one too, ignore the job totally. Run down this alley looking at the pharmaceutical store, then you'll see the Stevenson's technology sign to the left. Basically, right around this corner, there's going to be a garage door that you can hack and open. And in this, and again, it's totally separate from the other building it's kind of attached to, you'll find a ton of loot, including this legendary mono wire. You go here at any point, and then just from here, go to a ripper dock, get it installed, and you can start the game off really strong with this mono wire. That is actually quite satisfying to use. I feel like it's like the least glamorous of the arm attachments between mantis blades, the missile launcher, and mono wire, but it's pretty effective and damning in combat. And though, those are some cool new weapons or cybernetic implants you can use as weapons to improve your gameplay. How about some new armors that'll actually allow you to survive long enough to deal the damage. Across Night City, there are also several legendary apparel items, many of which are corpo themes that you could just find on bodies. It doesn't really seem like you have to do much of anything to actually gain access to them. You'll just stumble upon them in your explorations or just watch this video and go to them directly. The first of which will be some cool legendary pants you can get. Basically, it looks like this was a movie set gone wrong. It's going to be on the north side of Watson, right at the edge of Night City. Go here, you'll find it pretty easily right around the north side. There's not a ton going on here. And basically, it looks like there was some kind of action sequence or something going on. And well, things didn't go according to plan. Somebody ended up dead, and now we can loot their very valuable pants. Although, literally just around the corner from this one, also in Watson and literally a two-minute drive away, you can find the corporate blazer. As you're driving, look for this barely illegal sign. Go in there, and you'll find a nice corporate jacket to go with your corpo pants. Both of these also being legendary items and being quite good stat-wise. Next up, we got some corpo glasses. This is going to take us to the other side of Night City, also right on the edge of the city by those solar panels. This one's pretty easy to find. You could pretty much line up your map 
exactly here. Look for some of the cross streets to get here specifically. And even as you're driving down the main road, it's going to basically be perpendicular to this Militech truck or whoever was holding that truck. From there, you're going to see this crash little ship go in the storage container around this side and you'll get your Corpo glasses, which also are legendary. But while you're here, actually another short drive away, we have another pretty cool legendary item for you. You'll find this little structure or outpost on the map. Again, it's really close to where you just were, so pretty easy to locate. Literally the only thing on the map in this area. So you want to jump the fence and get into this outpost and more or less there'll be some enemies. I literally just ran past them. They didn't bother me much. And you're going to want to get to the top of this watchtower. Now you could use your double jump legs if you have that implant. Otherwise you can get here just using the typical jump method and you'll find this legendary hat at the top. This isn't a corpo hat unfortunately, but still is legendary and it still does have a good armor rating and good stats overall. Mind having the effect of increasing your blanket armor rating by 20. And then finally you need a shirt to complete this outfit. For here you're going to want to travel over to Haywood, another easy one to find at the end of this pier. It looks like it's the second to last staircase down. You can just use this map marker again. More or less, go down the stairs on the side of the pier, jump this little fence, another easy one to get over, and then on a body, you will find a new shirt that you can wear. Not quite being corpo themed either, but another legendary shirt that will really boost some of your stats. So now you have free legendary armor, you have some free legendary weapons in the form of cybernetics. How about a free car? So this is another simple one. Basically, just go here on the map in the Badlands. It is relatively easy to find. Just follow the road up until this little bundle of structures. It actually is a film set of some kind. And well, it looks like things went wrong, but they left their car and the car keys behind. So you can claim this free vehicle that will be permanently added to your garage. Now it's not really that good of a vehicle by any means, but hey, it's totally free. And if you're early in the game, it's one of the few ones you can get without any prerequisites whatsoever. Another easy one is the Char Incendiary Grenade in Santa Domingo. This is going to be an epic quality grenade you could find at this location. You literally just walk up to the location. There'll be a little crate here or a box that does have the plan. You click on it and you do have it learned. Unfortunately, to craft epic items, you do have to have a 12 in the appropriate attribute and then the right perk. But if you do spec into this, it can be very valuable because it only takes one common and one uncommon component to craft, but breaks down into epic and rare components. So you can use this to pretty easily farm some components or even sell them for money. And it's another one that has no prerequisites to get to. But if you want much better stuff for free, but actually you have to do some quests along the way, because at the end of the day, you probably do want to play the game at some point. Right off the bat, after finishing the prologue to the game, you will have this hero's quest in your options. You have to call Mama Wells. I don't want to spoil too much around this, but if you do this quest, and specifically, it seems like you might have to be nice to Mama Wells along the way, you'll end up with Jackie's bike, which is easily one of the faster bikes in the game. Not clear if it's the fastest of the bunch. I haven't tested that yet, but it definitely holds up with some of the other very fast cars. But if you want the single fastest car for free, there's another easy one. Basically, what you're going to have to do is the Ghost Town quest. This is another main story mission. I'll have a guide down below so you can see some of the prerequisites to actually get to this quest, what other quests you'll have to complete. But you will have to do the quest with Pen Am, which are available to you pretty early on. But once you finish the Ghost Town quest overall, there will be the fastest car in the game available to to you just in a cave somewhere. So if you're trying to do this immediately after finishing Ghost Town, you'll have to wait typically 24 to 72 hours. Just wait a couple of days real quick, but then just go to this road in the game. Another one in the Badlands that just kind of ominously ends. As you're driving down this road, you'll see it actually turns into a cave and the road marker does stop. And if you're driving into the cave, if you went in on the same side I did, you'll see on the left, there'll just be a blue shipping container. This is actually a reference to a very famous character from another universe. I'll save that surprise for when you read the notes and actually get here. But from here, you could just get into the caliber, which is the fastest car in the game, particularly on the street. And this car is just yours. The Ghost Town quest isn't that far into the game. And probably once you unlock this car, which just involves finding it, you'll never need another car unless you want one for off-roading or if you want a motorcycle, which we also just showed you how to get a free motorcycle. So hopefully at this point, between the freebies and the new knowledge you have of the game and some of its mechanics, you are set. Hopefully you guys found this one informative. Hopefully it helped you out and hopefully it just helped you to enjoy the game a bit more. Obviously there's some issues as far as the performance goes as well as some of the bugginess but there's definitely a good game underneath that so if you are able to actually play it through those issues or not having too many issues yourself I do hope this video helped you get a bit more enjoyment out of Cyberpunk 2077. As always again I thank you all for watching I hope you enjoyed and I hope to see you all next time. Later.